In the previous video, we used an RGB LED module. This time, we will also use a push button along with this RGB LED module. I have already explained the pinout and interfacing of the push button module. For the connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. And let me remind you one more time, if you don't have the Arduino Uno R4 minima board, there is no need to worry. You can also use the Arduino Uno R3 or even you can use the Arduino Nano. The purpose of the program is to detect the state of a push button connected to the Arduino and print a message to the serial monitor based on whether the button is pressed or released. This line declares a constant integer variable button pin and assigns it the value 2. This means the push button is connected to digital pin 2 on the Arduino. The setup function is called once when the Arduino starts. It sets up the button pin as an input. This configures the Arduino to read the state of the pin. The loop function runs continuously after the setup function. Inside this loop, the program reads the state of the button using digital read function, which returns the state of the button high or low and stores it in the button state variable. Here, the program checks the value of button state. If it's low, it means the button is pressed, and button pressed is printed to the serial monitor. If not, else button released is printed. Finally, there is a delay which passes the loop for 500 milliseconds, half a second. This delay prevents the messages from being printed too rapidly and continuously. Let's go ahead and upload this program. You can see when I press the button, a message button pressed is printed on the screen. And when I release the button, a message button released is printed. I know this task might feel very basic to you like it's for children, but trust me, this will be useful in almost every project you do in the future. Because if you have learned how to detect the button press and release states, now you can use any digital sensor to print a message on the screen. The main purpose of this example was to read a digital input and then based on the detection to print a message on the serial monitor. Let's make it a bit complex now. You can see that when the button is not pressed, it keeps printing the same message over and over again that button released. And when I press the button, it repeatedly prints the same message saying button pressed. I want the message to be printed only once when I press or release the button. So let's go ahead and do it. I have slightly modified the previous code and as you can see, I have added comments to maximum of the instructions. The variable last button state is used to store the last state of the button initially set to low. This is a boolean variable to keep track of the toggle state. You're already familiar with this part of the code. This line reads the current state of the button. This part of the program checks if the button state has changed compared to its previous state. If the state has changed, enters the conditional block. If button state is low means if the button is pressed, it toggles the is on state. This is a way to change the state each time the button is pressed. Depending on whether is on is true or false, it prints button pressed or button released to the serial monitor. This small delay is added to handle debouncing. When a button is pressed, it physically bounces a little and can cause multiple detections. This delay ensures that only one press or release is registered in a short time frame. The current button state is saved as the last state for the next loop iteration. Let's go ahead and upload this program. Now you can see the message is printed only once. It doesn't matter if I keep the button pressed because until the state of the button changes, another message won't be printed. This concept of a toggle switch will be quite useful in many of your upcoming projects. Next, instead of printing a message on the screen, we will turn an LED on or off. When we press the button, the LED will turn on and when we press the button again, the LED will turn off. So let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. Again, I slightly modified the program. As you can see, this time I have also defined a pin for the LED. Although there are three LEDs in this RGB LED module, I will only control one LED. In the circuit diagram, you can see that the blue LED is connected to pin 11. The rest of the code is exactly the same. This time, instead of printing messages, I'm turning the LED on or off. Let's go ahead and upload this program.
So you can see I'm able to turn the LED on and off without any false triggering. If you want to control higher AC or DC loads, you can replace the LED with a relay or a MOSFET. I will explain this in much detail in my upcoming tutorials. Anyway, now let's take this project to a slightly more advanced level. In this next example, we will use the push button to turn on each of the three LEDs one by one. So let's go ahead and take a look at the programming. By looking at this program, you must have gotten the idea that this time I have combined the LED blinking and push button toggle programs. The flow of the program is exactly the same, but this time I have used the concept of a counter. I count the button clicks and then based on the value, we control the LEDs. I've added comments, so I'm sure you won't face any difficulty in understanding this code. Anyway, this time I've also called a function named setColor in which I have passed color index as an argument. White at the start of the function name means that this function does not have a return type and it takes only one argument as input. Inside this function, you can see we are just turning on the LEDs based on the index number. So let's go ahead and upload this program. In the next example, we will study analog input and PWM pulse width modulation in detail. We will use PWM to automatically control the brightness of the RGB LED module, and then we will also control it using a potentiometer. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked this episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode, and thanks for watching.